Let's go to the first question that was submitted to our toll-free phone line at an earlier time. Hi, Chris. Can you please explain 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 12? Thank you. Yes. In 1 Kings 8, verse 12, it says, Then spake Solomon, Jehovah said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. Now, that's kind of unusual. What does that mean, that Jehovah would dwell in the thick darkness? Well, when we look up the word, when we search the Bible to look up this Hebrew word, it's 6205 in Strong's Concordance. And it's found in some interesting places. For instance, in Exodus 20, verse 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountains smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And this is taking place on Mount Horeb. God is given the law. We read also about this incident in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10, especially the day that thou stoodest before Jehovah thy God in Horeb, when Jehovah said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near, and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. So two times, as God is making this appearance upon a burning mountain, and also thick darkness, which is strange. How can you have both fire and thick darkness? But we understand that that's just language indicating the judgment of God. God likens judgment day to fire. He also likens it to a time of darkness, outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And they're both just word pictures to teach different aspects of the nature of judgment day. Now, this word, thick darkness, also is found in Joel chapter 2, verse 2. And Joel 2 is describing judgment day. And it says in Joel 2, 2, A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, and then it goes on. The whole passage is describing Judgment Day. Judgment Day is a time of thick darkness. In Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 15, that day, once again, Judgment Day, is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Well, what does Judgment Day, when God brings his wrath upon the unsaved inhabitants of the earth, what does that have to do with Solomon's temple? Because 1 Kings chapter 8 is telling us of the time when the temple was completed, the Ark of the Covenant was just brought into the temple, And it says, for instance, in 1 Kings 8, verse 6, And the priests brought in the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah unto his place, into the oracle of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. And then in verse 8, And they drew out the staves, that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle, and they were not seen without, and there they are unto this day, There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb. So the scripture we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and Exodus 20, and there's actually another place in Deuteronomy 5 that says the same thing. At the time of the giving of the law on Mount Horeb, God appeared in this thick darkness. And here too, when the temple has been completed, The ark is being brought into the temple, and we know the ark symbolizes the presence of God. It's a figure of God himself and God entering into the house. When the staves are removed from the ark, and the staves would have been long poles put into the rings so that they could carry it, 
happen once the ark was positioned in the house inside the Holy of Holies. They took out the staves, and when it says they are there unto this day, whenever we read that statement in the Bible, it is there unto this day, that is a statement to express eternity. It has to do with something that is everlasting. And so God, symbolized by the ark, entering into the house. And what does the house represent? Well, Hebrews 3 speaks of Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we? Or we read very plainly in 1 Peter 2 verse 5 that we are a spiritual house. So the completion of the house of God is really a picture of God completing his salvation program because all the living stones, each one of the elect, have been found, put in their proper position in order to build up that structure, the house of God. And once finished, then God enters in and dwells among them. It's really the beginning of the fulfillment of Revelation 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. God is dwelling with his people because the spiritual house, again, has been completed, and at that point, he enters into them and dwells in their midst. When we read, like in Joel chapter 3, where it says, after telling us in verse 15, that the sun and moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining, and when does that take place? Well, Matthew 24, verse 29, tells us it's immediately after the tribulation. What takes place immediately after the tribulation? Judgment Day. May 21, 2011 ended the Great Tribulation, and it was the day of transition for Judgment Day. Okay, so that would be the time that Joel 2.2, 2, the day identified with thick darkness, and Zephaniah 1, verse 15, a day of thick darkness, begins on Judgment Day. And also here in Joel 3, we have the verse giving us the time clue. It's after the tribulation. Then in verse 16, Jehovah also shall roar out of Zion. That is, out of the New Jerusalem, the body of believers, that spiritual house. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. That would be spiritual Jerusalem or Jerusalem that consists of all the elect. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Jehovah will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. This is telling us that in those days after that tribulation, God will dwell with us. He will be our hope and our strength all throughout this long period of judgment day. And he will be the cause of our endurance until its conclusion. But then it says in verse 17, So shall ye know that I am Jehovah your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And that's a phrase to indicate God is dealing exclusively with his people. There's no more corporate church where we and tares come together. No, it's just God and the individual elect. As we are in the post-church age, the days after the church age, and throughout this period of time. And so that's why in 1 Kings 8 that Solomon, being moved by the Holy Spirit, is revealing that Jehovah said he would dwell in thick darkness. And then look at verse 13 of 1 Kings 8. I have surely built thee a house to dwell in, a settled place for thee to abide in forever. Now, that proves that it's the spiritual house and not the physical house, the actual building Solomon commissioned and had constructed. It has to be the spiritual house and Solomon, a type of Christ, because the settled place for God to dwell in forever certainly was not that temple. That temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. It didn't even last more than 300 years from 967 until 587 B.C. It's almost 400 years, but it didn't last forever. It was destroyed. So too when the second temple, Zerubbabel's temple, was built. 
it was destroyed. The house in view in 1 Kings 8 is the spiritual house whose house are we. And God comes to dwell in it upon its completion. And that happened just prior to May 21, 2011, when all of the elect became saved. And it was simultaneous with Judgment Day. And so God dwells in the thick darkness of Judgment Day within his people.